Hi, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome to another RC Worst video. Today, I'm going to walk you through selecting a jet pump. We're going to discuss some of the common types of jet pumps and materials used in their constructions. This video does not discuss how to properly size a jet pump, however, which is an important step in selecting a jet pump. We will, however, be putting together a video on sizing a jet pump very soon and feature it in the description below once available. When looking for a jet pump, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the seemingly endless number of options. In this video, I hope to help you cut through the competition and find the right pump for your application. When shopping for a replacement pump, people often replace their pump with the exact make and model that was there before. In a lot of cases, that's okay to do. To determine if that's the right move for you, consider how long the pump lasted as well as how much the replacement will cost. If you're not comfortable with either one of those numbers, then it may be time to look at something different. I'll include a link in the description to an article that I wrote a while back about how long a pump should last, just for reference. So what if the pump is discontinued or no longer available at the time that you may need it? Well, a lot of times, the best option, of course, is to pick up the phone and call us. But for all you do-it-yourselfers, or anyone out there wanting to know exactly what's going on behind the curtain, here we go. Now the first step in selecting a jet pump is to familiarize yourself kind of with the ins and outs of the application. The minimum information that you're going to want to know to make an informed decision is what is the source. When thinking about the source, you're wanting to consider the supply of water. Is it a spring, a well, a lake, a stream? What is the water quality? Is there a chance that this pump could con come in contact with anything that could damage it, such as sand, sediment, iron, salt, and so forth? Another thing to consider is, is it possible for the pump to freeze? Does it experience sub-freezing temperatures? All things to consider when selecting a jet pump. What you're also gonna wanna look into is how frequently is the pump expected to operate and for how long? Another thing you'll need to look at is what is the suction lift? What are the suction lift requirements? By that, of course, we're meaning what is the overall height difference from where the pump's going to sit to the water level and how high does it need to draw that water? What are the flow requirements for the application? Is this high flow, low flow? What are you, what are you using it for? You've got to know that. What are the system head requirements? Now, when it comes to system head, you might not be familiar with that, but what we have done is we've put together a video on understanding pump head, so check below in the description for a link to that video. Now, once you've familiarized yourself with the application and kind of gone over all of the details that you're aware of, it's time to go shopping for a pump. Now, our goal here when shopping for a pump is to find the right one for the job a pump that is best suited for your specific application. Pumps are not necessarily one size fits all. So let's talk for a moment about what it means to find the right pump for the job. The right pump for the job will offer a balance of upfront costs as well as long-term life cycle costs, including maintenance repair of the pump. In general, a more expensive pump should translate to less problems down the road than a pump that's a little bit less money. A higher price for a pump does not necessarily imply that it's a better pump for your particular application. The right pump for the job should also optimize energy efficiency by balancing energy consumption with the reliability factor for your specific application. Additionally, the right pump for the job should maximize the overall life of the pump by combining the construction materials as well as the sizing and selection process to optimize all possible areas to get the most longevity out of your particular pump. Now, when it comes to above ground pumps, there are a number of pumps to choose from that are somewhat similar to jet pumps, both in shape and size. So keep in mind, there are numerous types of non-submersible pumps on the market that are included with the various offerings of jet pumps. There are centrifugal type pumps, trash pumps, pool pumps, and even the shallow and jet, jet pumps that we're gonna talk about today. Additionally, they've got convertible jet pumps, 
which are essentially a combination of deep and shallow well pumps, depending on the configuration used. So, what makes a jet pump a jet pump? I'll give you a little hint. It's in the name. A jet pump utilizes a jet ejector, or nozzle and venturi, to efficiently lift water. A shallow well jet uses a portion of the water that is accelerated by the impeller to force water back through a venturi tube on the inlet side of the pump that this in turn creates a low pressure zone on the inlet or suction side of the pump, increasing the pump's net positive suction head. This internal action enables these pumps to lift water from lower elevations. It allows for some configurations of jet pumps to draw water from depths upwards of 150 feet. And this is essentially what makes a jet pump unique from other surface pumps on the market. We'll talk more about this particular feature in a future video. So let's take a look at some pumps and discuss the various features to look out for so you can gain a better understanding of what pumps might be right for you. In taking a look at these pumps, we have in front of me the AY McDonald, actually two, well, three AY McDonald jet pumps. Now, the two here are from the 8200 series uh, convertible jet pumps that AY McDonald offer. And uh, this one here is a half horsepower, this one here is a three quarter horsepower, but we won't get hung up on the, the details of these particular pumps. Um, in general, this pump, uh, the 8200 series offers cast iron body construction. The uh, impeller is a engineered thermoplastic impeller. AY McDonald, typically with their impellers, does a glass reinforcement to make them a little bit more robust. I would imagine that that's featured on this particular pump. The maximum head rating on this pump is gonna be 75 PSI with the right ejector. The maximum suction lift on these pumps is gonna be 110 feet with a, the proper deep well ejector. The maximum flow or maximum capacity of the, these pumps is 60 gallons a minute, which is quite high. The discharge size on these pumps is standard at three quarter or one inch. You will find that this pump has a multi-port discharge, meaning that uh, you've got some options, which is always nice. Uh, the motor speed on the pump is a standard 3500 RPM, and the pressure switch is going to come preset to 3050 PSI. For those of you who aren't oh, familiar with what that means, that means that the pump will turn on when the pressure in the system falls below 30 PSI, or roughly 30 PSI, and it will turn off. The pump will build up pressure and shut off at 50 PSI. That's known as a pump cycle. Uh, the motor bearings on this pump are a locked drive end ball bearing, which is a nice configuration for continuous duty applications. What is standard today on these pumps is an open drip proof motor cover. The 8200 series feature a standard 5 8 ceramic carbon rotating mechanical seal. The horsepower offerings are one half, three quarter, and one horsepower and the pump is available in 115 and 230 volt. All right, and finally, what we've got over here, this big guy, this is an AY McDonald 1500 series, and this is a multi-stage jet pump. We thought this one was pretty awesome because it has multiple stages, so it's able to operate at a much higher pressure than these single stage pumps. So again, we've got a cast iron body construction However, this pump differs because it's a little bit heavier duty. It has a bronze impeller, and those two stages, as I mentioned, kick the maximum pressure rating of this pump way up, and we're able to pump to a maximum head of 231 feet. And that's gonna be roughly uh, 100 PSI. The multi-stage de multi design on this pump has its advantages not only on head pressure, but also on the suction lift side of things. With a two pipe ejector, this pump will be able to draw up to 160 feet. The maximum capacity on this pump is about 42 gallons per minute. And it's a lot more limited because of the number of stages in the pump. The 1500 series pumps feature a one inch discharge and a inch and a quarter inlet. The motor bearings on this pump's motor feature a locked drive end ball bearing system. Again, this pump has a standard speed of 3,500 RPM, and the pressure switches are gonna come preset to 3050 PSI. 
The motor cover on this pump is an open drip proof type covering. The shaft seal on this pump is a 3 quarter inch carbon ceramic rotating type mechanical seal. The 1500 series is available in 3 quarter, 1 and 1 and 1 half horsepower configurations. The maximum fluid temperature for this pump is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The 1500 series as a standard is available in 115 and 230 volt configuration. The motors are a dual voltage motor, so a simple switch on the back of any one of these pumps and you can change it from 115 to 230 and back again. So to go into a little bit more detail on the differences between these pumps as opposed to kind of just the specifications, uh, these, the 8200 series are going to be ideal for your, your normal residential applications as well as some light duty irrigation where you haven't got any exceptionally deep wells to deal with and or any tremendous distances from where you're getting water to where it's needing to be discharged. It's a relatively powerful pump and it's going to last you a really long time because it has a very effectively designed system for energy efficiency as well as the ability to provide long lasting longevity with all the components involved. The limitations on this pump of course are the voltage configurations offered but this particular pump with its relatively low horsepower offering is going to be a good pump for your everyday water well and shallow well applications. Uh, the same is true for the most part with the 1500 series the multi-stage 1500 series, those are intended for applications where you've got much greater distances to overcome or perhaps the home is up on a hill, so you've got to compensate for that loss in pressure. And um, it's, it's going to be designed for, for situations where you've got more pressure to overcome or longer distances essentially. So those are kind of just two differences when comparing like a single stage jet pump to a multi-stage jet pump. As far as the jets that attach them, I've got a jet here that, that is basically the same jet that we have on the 8200 series. And you can see on this, on this 1500, it would just marry right up there. Now I don't have the bolts out to bolt that on, but that's essentially all it would do. So when you're selecting one of these pumps, you take a look at the documentation and that documentation is gonna give you various flow rates at the various suction lifts that you're trying to accomplish. So when you're sizing a jet, like if we've got, we've got here, this is a deep well jet uh, inject, ejector and essentially, depending on what flow and what your suction lift is, as well as what pressure you're trying to achieve, there's going to be various configurations that are offered with each pump and each horsepower that are going to give you that end result that you're looking for. So if you're wanting more specific information on any of the models that we discussed here today, or just for uh, general information on jet pumps, we feature tons of jet pumps on our website. Check out rcworst.com. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. If you have product specific questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. We're standing by to answer your emails or phone calls. We've got live chat support as well on our website. I wanna thank you for joining me today and uh, I appreciate you watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more great content like this. We'll see you next time.